the being responsible for all that loud, grating noise simply disappeared without a trace. Ever since then, whenever I hear a baby crying, I remember that bizarre experience. Well, what do you think, my fairy? Was it <laughs> some sort of sign? Yeah, some sort of sign that you should take a tolerance break. What else we got? By the way, you're still searching for Patricia, yes? You don't need to worry about that. We're investigating. Well, she got your other glove? In fact, we've almost reached our goal. We just need to find some conclusive evidence. Oh, we sincerely hope that's the case. Hard to believe, though. After all, so far you've just been barking up the wrong tree. Red tree! Barking up the wrong tree. That's right. You shouldn't be wasting time here. You should be out there. L then I'll just ask you straight away. Do you know where she is? No. We don't. But we can feel her when we close our eyes and become one with the world. How about that? It's very faint. But we can see her. We can see. I can Patricia. smell you. Are you trying to distract me again? Or do you really expect me to believe you're clairvoyant or something? <laughs> what do you think we are, X-Men? Never, never took him for a Marvel fan. It's metaphysical offender profiling. Mop, for short. Like what I'm gonna have to do in the bathroom when he Simon finally asked comes me out. Where Patricia is? Does he have full confidence that we'll never find her? Fine. I can deal with that. I'll just ask him everything I can about the Lucare case. See what kind of secrets he's hiding in his friggin' huge forehead. I gotta know. I gotta this know. This square area enclosed by milk cartons. Is it another sanctuary? The more I look around, the more I feel like there's some sort of system to all this. The sanctuary on this table. The fireplace sanctuary. And the milk carton sanctuary. They all lead into the room back there. What? And there's one more by the window, and yet another by my feet. Yo, he's just depressed, lady. Are they signs? Or is this all some sort of path? Hey, Belle. Is that a serious question? <laughs> of course it is. We're drying them out. We line the milk cartons up to dry them out. Or else it gets the hose again? So we can turn them into Halloween decorations. Halloween? <laughs> I love Halloween! It's only January. This is America. Land of the free. Got a problem with that? Oh, ho, 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 ho. bodied. Try reading the Constitution sometime, sweetheart. So you think Galena was murdered by Helena Doman, her own brother? No, not her. Galena was someone else. Then who killed her? It's written in the report, isn't it? Yes, but I'm asking you. Would you mind answering me in your own words? You see, I find your entire story highly suspicious. Um... What gives you that impression? It's a complicated matter. Extremely complicated. Oh, well, say no more. I wouldn't want to bother you.
By the way, how did the FBI find Lisa's body? Ah, uh, we used our eyeballs. After 14 whole years. That's none of your business. Are you saying they just happened to be investigating the Clarkson's cold storage warehouse by pure chance? That there was some undercover terrorism plot at foot there? I said it's none of your business. <laughs> well, then we'll just have to guess. Isn't that right, my fairy? It was an anonymous tip. A tip related to Saint Rouge. Did we hit the nail on the head, Belle? <laughs> but. That's not what we want to know about. Oh, okay. Thanks for asking. After all, the FBI gets hundreds of tips every day. Right, my fairy? It was always that way. Even back when we were on duty. Here's what we really want to know. Why, out of all those tips, did you select that one? Would you tell us that much, Bell? What urged you? to make a beeline straight for this case. That's... None of your business. None of your business. Yep, okay. Don't let him draw you into his game. Stay calm, Aaliyah Davis. <laughs> Aaliyah Davis. Pondering Aaliyah. The future influences the present just as much as the past. Sigmundus. You asked me why I spent an entire two days observing you before I came to speak with you. Well, here's why. Over those 49 hours, I observed the intervals between your actions. I have already calculated the error in your recipe. Perhaps a little bit more sodium chloride next time? When you were neither doing something nor doing nothing. I intently studied your intervals between action to action. An action to inaction. To action. Is this game written by George W. Bush? People reveal everything during the intervals between their actions. For example, when you eat alone versus eating with someone else. The most prominent differences always appear when someone either begins or finishes eating a meal. And since these are unconscious actions, they can't be consciously hidden. When you prepare to eat, or finish eating, when you move in to clean up, when you pick up a book or close one, when you raise a cup of coffee to your lips. I'll be watching you. Hey, baby, can't Human you actions see? Human actions speak volumes. Not even the person doing you the actions is conscious of me. it. That's what lies in those intervals. That's my modus operandi. S Mundus operandi. And here's the conclusion it helped me reach. There's one other person in this house. Yes, yeah, Simon! Isn't there? <laughs> You're incredible, Belle. <laughs> you outdid all our expectations. Impressive, to say the least. You're right, Belle. But only half right. Half? You should still be proud, though. Honestly, we never thought you'd make it this far. You've got real talent. <laughs> Happy laugh. That's nice. That does bring a smile to my Most face. Most of what you say is... If this goes to court, I won't let you claim that your testimony is inadmissible just because of your little indulgence there. Fine by us. <laughs> we can even put it in writing if you want. We won't run or hide, will we, my fairy? Where's the paper? I know I had it around here somewhere. Where, where is it? Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> my sanctuary! We're fine. Hey, everything okay? Let's go! Out here? Oh, don't tell me. He's just suffering from nausea. I was more worried about you. You were in there for quite some time. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Ever since you got here, I've been all backed up. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Morgan, can you stand? 
this a sign <laughs> from the coffee? Oh. Like, what could it be? What is it trying to tell me? That's hard. It's not very clear. Think. Is that a dragonfly? Footsteps. Big footsteps. Footsteps. Big f footsteps. Red tree. Some odd fella was following her around. Dano playing. Stalking her like. That poor girl, Lace. She was a druggie. Semi pro. And she was into the really bad stuff. The Red Soul has the power to amplify the unique characteristics we all possess, mentally and physically. Stick to something you know, like fire dynamics. That's why I created the Holy Red Powder. You okay? I should be asking you that question. We're fine. Just feeling a little tired. Would you take us to get our medicine? Uh, sure. Don't it's send him back the there. He'll be there for years. <laughs> <laughs> he just got back. <sighs> Seems like he's calmed down a little. We should let him rest for a while. One more step and I could have cornered Morgan. But so be it. I can still keep investigating even if the owner of this chair isn't present. Simon Jones, what a piece of work. How can anyone have such bad timing? This suit is freaking me out, dude. Let me get one thing straight. You started this investigation based on an anonymous tip, right? What kind of a tip was it? Phone or mail? What does that matter at this point? <sighs> this may surprise you, but these kinds of details really eat me up inside. Yeah, what doesn't eat you up inside? I always get hung up on the most insignificant of details especially during the most vital times. For example, uh, you know how people go to bed early the night before they have a big job? That's exactly the time where I start focusing on, on, on meaningless nonsense. Hmm, when did I last clip my nails? How long is my milk good for? I just can't help myself. I can't resist the need to know. It's just the way I am. So what? It was sent in an envelope. Postmark December 28th, sent out from Louisiana. What did it have inside? A postcard with a dragonfly on it. A wrapped sample of Saint Rouge. And a note. What did it say? Investigate the Clarksons. F.K. F -K. That's it? Yes, that's it. Who's F.K.? Anonymous tip, remember? It's obviously just a fake name. Did you confirm that? Of course I did. Louisiana has a population of 4.5 million. The FBI database has a list of 6,682 individuals whose initials are FK. One out of every six individuals is a child under the age of 14, born after 2005. The remaining 5,500 people include those whose initials changed after they married or incarcerated individuals. After subtracting those, I was left with 3,800. Your tax dollars at work. That's when I stopped searching for FK and I decided to change up my approach. It isn't important where the tip came from. <laughs> That's where I stopped. I got this far by taking the most efficient route possible. Are you satisfied now? Yeah, thanks. I feel a lot better now. Yep, it all checks out. All right, empty chair. Mess of pizza boxes. What's wrong, Aaliyah? You hungry or something? Simon, shut the fuck up! Excuse me? What are you insinuating? Well, you're staring right at an empty pizza box. Please don't compare yourself to me. <laughs> oh. Besides, I have a refined palate. What, you don't like pizza? Hey, 
that was uncalled for. Pizza is a sacred food, remember? You don't need to feel embarrassed for being unable to stop staring at it. It enthralls all who gaze upon it. Mmm, the narwhal bacons at midnight, brother. That's the power of pizza. Stop, Agent Jones. I've had enough of this sacred pizza bit. I'm sick of you Chicagoans and your obsession with pizza. Pizza, 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 24 hours a day, that's all you ever talk about. D ugh. What's next? You gonna launch into a tirade about how deep dish is the only proper way to make pizza? Sorry, it's just, it's a, it was, a, Aaliyah, it was a bit, it was a bit we were trying to just create some entertainment and discussion for the show. No, 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 Aaliyah. You just don't get it, do you? As a Chicagoan, I'm proud of the deep dish pizza. But get this. I love New York style pizza too. It doesn't matter what kind of pizza it is. As long as it's a pizza, it's beautiful. This dude fucks pizza. What? Still don't get it? Okay, here. I'm gonna put it in terms that I'm sure even you could understand. What do you mean, even you? All pizzas are created equal. We, so we hold these truths to be self-revident. You know the rest. Eat your heart out, Nietzsche. Just forget I mentioned anything. Okay. Why do you think he's trying to survive so badly? Tough question. What does he hope to achieve? What do you mean? He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Uh, no more Nietzsche. <laughs> Please, just stop. I feel like my ears are gonna start bleeding. <laughs> hey, Agent Jones. Wanna know why I love Nietzsche's quotes so much? Uh, Not at all. Sure. I first discovered Nietzsche in a shelter after Katrina. At the time, I was shell shocked, hopeless. I wanted to die. How could a 13 year old girl go on living alone with her little brother? And then, in that shelter, I met a college professor. His school was damaged by the hurricane, too, and got closed down. He also lost his family and was living there in the shelter just like me. It's a great time to introduce a, a child to nihilism. Straight after they lose their whole family. So we gradually started spending more time together. I'll never forget the three months I spent with him. He loved Nietzsche. And out of all of Nietzsche's quotes, there was one from Thus Spoke Zarathustra that he repeated over and over again. Uh, I believe the quote was, who farted? Better know nothing than half know many things. Better be a fool on one's own account than a sage on other people's approbation. I thought it was a strange quote to hear from a college professor, you know? Why would he think it would be good to be a fool? But I understand what he meant now. He was trying to encourage my little brother and I. Couldn't have just said, like, go get him. So that we'd be able to bear the weight of the victim label that was about to be slapped onto us. So that we could go on respecting ourselves without ever succumbing to all the patronizers. After that, my grandmother and Lafayette took us in. And that was the last time I ever saw the professor. But whenever I quote Nietzsche, my memories of him come flowing back into my mind. And they give me the power I need to keep pressing on. So I'm going to keep quoting Nietzsche, just to make sure I don't forget my roots. Uh, careful, Simon might start quoting Jordan Peterson. Oh, I, uh, I see. Yeah, I think I get it now. Nietzsche is to you what pizza is to me. Sorry for giving you a hard time about it. You are free to go on quoting him whenever you want, of course. I won't say another word. Agent Jones. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> How dare you compare Nietzsche with pizza? They kind of sound the same. Oh, come on. Shouldn't you look after him? I gave him his meds and let him rest. 
Let him rest where? In the bathtub. It happened to have a blanket and a pillow in it. What? But why? I don't know. Maybe he sleeps in the tub. I feel like I saw that once in some vampire movie. I don't know what you're talking about. More importantly, how long has he been like that? It's stage four cancer. He's had it for a while now. No. No. I'm talking about his face. <laughs> looks as white as a sheet. You can even see all his veins. What kind of diet is he on? I've never heard of any cancer side effect like that. Uh, who knows? But now that you mention it, he started going really crazy around the beginning of December. In what way? He changed pizza places. Oh. My. God. This better not be another joke. It's not, really. It's not. <laughs> Before December, he always used to order delivery from a Chicago-style joint all the way up near Medford. But one day, he took one look at one of their trademarked red boxes and totally lost it. Red, huh? You better believe it. He started screaming gibberish at the pizza boy and chased him away. Next thing I know, I see him toss the pizza box out his window. Yeah, I bet it was your favorite day at work of all time. He ate it up like a little rat right off the sidewalk. Do you think that's when his fear of red began surfacing more prominently? Beats me. I mean, there isn't a better Chicago-style pizza place that delivers around this area. How could someone give up on that just because they don't like the box? <sighs> I don't get it. Were you serious for even a fraction of that story? The letter that was delivered to me... What are you talking about? That was good soon. intel! A postcard decorated with a dragonfly. A single sheet of paper ordering me to investigate the Clarksons. And... Oh my god, dude. Who when collects it, vinyl in an age like this when you can stream just about anything? True. Morgan's got refined taste. Look at that Godsmack album. You really think so? Now, even I thought they were cool back when the vinyl revival first started. But now, every suburban mall has its own vinyl shop right next to the novelty store. At this point, it's become a solid component of modern snobbism, which only makes them that much more uncool. People who know nothing about real music are buying them up just so they can decorate their walls with cute album art. <sighs> How do you ever have time to enjoy anything when you're always so busy putting people down? Excuse me? You're like IBS. You keep flaring up at the worst times and there's no end in sight. And when you're alone with Morgan, it's just an all-out war zone. We're in the middle of a very important investigation right now. Don't you think we ought to take it seriously? To me, it just looks like you're putting yourself under a lot of stress for no good reason. Why can't you, you know, show a little humanity once in a while? Does one need humanity in order to track down criminals? Yes, one does. Or at least I do. Well, I don't. Isn't that right, Zach? <sighs> Come on, Aaliyah. I'm your partner, aren't I? For a few days, at the very least. I'm your Shut invasive partner who has a passionate up, relationship dude. with pizza. Shut up! Right? Shut up about pizza, dude! Why can't you just let me in on one thing you actually happen to enjoy? No, oh, aside from Nietzsche, that is. You know, I'd really rather not. How did this guy get through the job interview? Why do you always have to be so withdrawn? I can't help it if there's certain things I don't like. No, come on. There's got to be some kind of music you enjoy. This is a good chance to teach me a bit about yourself. I said no. Do you like Justin Bieber? Too cute. Not my type. Go off, sis. Drake? I've only ever listened to the hooks. Yo. Well then, Ariana Grande, Katy Perry. Hell no, am I Hell done Hell no! Well then, what do you like? Ugh. If she says Steely Dan, dude. I have to tell you- If she says Steely Dan, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. Yes, you do. I'm gonna lose it. 
Pink Floyd. Oh, we were so close. We were like one little notch on the dial. No way. You're a prog rocker? Who turned you on to it? Your dad? As far as I can remember, I've loved prog rock ever since I was born. <laughs> That's, That's a, just how music that works, That is a right? goddamn lie. I mean, the Wall is by far my favorite album. Even to this day, I find it hard to believe that they made that in the 70s. It still sounds completely fresh and unique, as if it was just released yesterday. And What? No, I was just thinking, I wish Morgan could have been here for this. Don't you dare tell him. Don't you dare tell him I like one of the most popular bands on earth. Oh, Aaliyah. Getting curious now, huh? We're in hell. This is hell. Here, I'll find one of my favorites for you. How about this one? Who Framed Roger Rabbit, directed by Robert Zemeckis. Christopher Lloyd, Bob Hoskins, everybody knows it, the iconic Jessica Rabbit scene. It's a fantasy movie that mixes real actors with cartoons, using what we'd call CG these days, I guess. Yeah, I know that one. It's the one where Michael Jordan plays basketball with all the what cartoon the fuck characters, right? did you just say to me? You have Who Framed Roger Rabbit confused with a 1995 film Space Jam. What? Simon no, is about Space to go Jam. fucking nuclear. It's not even the same director. And besides, that one has the Looney Tunes in it. <laughs> you dumb bitch. Whatever. Either way, I'm not watching it. Hm. Fine by me. You know, you're really lacking in the cute department. <laughs> oh my god. Simon! Is that supposed to be an insult? No, not at all. I'm just trying to help you turn a new leaf. Simon's like, hey, you should smile more. I'm your invasive partner, remember? Why do you care so much? I like myself just the way I am. No. Wrong answer. <laughs> I think you could use a little more... Oh, no. Softness. You know what I mean? That would definitely make it easier for people to help you out, you know. You're flawless, intelligent, and charming. All you're missing is some soft spots. Soft spots? Yeah, you know. Like when people find out a super serious politician is actually a huge comic book nerd. Something like that. You've got to have something. Something you secretly like that people wouldn't expect. I'm a big fan of about 4.15 p.m. on Sundays. Well, I don't. End of story. Hey, uh-oh. The lady doth protest too much, methinks. What do you mean? I just said I don't. I hate this man. Which means you definitely do. Well, what is it? Come on, I gotta know. He, they, she ethered him. <laughs> Agent Jones, that chessboard is still bugging me. I mean, come on, who plays the French defense? I don't know why, but it just does. You really think he was playing chess all by himself? I don't know. I definitely think it's possible. How? Maybe he's remembering the strategies an old friend of his used to use. If it's someone he played for years, he's probably capable of recreating their playing style. And besides, Morgan's beaten a grandmaster before. Yeah, Morgan also has dunked a basketball over Shaquille O'Neal's head. You know that, right? I read about that in the Greenvale report. Even a computer can play chess these days, right? Yeah, it's 2019. Even a computer can play chess these days. I'm sure that a grandmaster level player would have no trouble emulating someone else's strategy. Hmm. Whose chess strategy is he emulating then? It's kind of hard to tell. We're about six moves into the game. So, why did you decide to take this case? Because it's my job. Really? I don't buy it. What? What do you mean you don't buy it? Why not? You aren't just following orders here. You've got way too much emotion invested in this. Some kind of special emotion. 
Must be a girl thing. There's no use trying to hide it. Despite how I may look, data analysis is my forte. I know how to see through lies. I don't mean to be nosy, but would it kill you to confide in me a little? Oh I didn't manage to live this long simply because I'm fiendishly handsome. Oh my god! And besides, we're going to be tiptoeing across a thin line of legality with the rest of this case, so I'd prefer to have some probable cause. That way, at least I can back you up when you need me to. There exists in the world a single path along which no one can go except you. Whither does it lead? Do not ask. Go along it. Hmm. Ronald McDonald? You're pulling out Nietzsche at a time like this? Come on. I have a little brother. <laughs> After overdosing on a certain drug, he was thrown into rehab. He's been clean for two years now, but he still won't utter a single word. All day long, he's plagued by hallucinations. He can't tell if he's dead or alive. Wanted. If this is reality or if it's all a dream. Saint Rouge. That's right. The doctor can't tell what's causing his condition, so they can't treat him. He just told me to prepare for the possibility that I may never get my brother back. Handed me a bill for $33,000. This was his. I bought it for him after he graduated high school and found a job. He never got a single chance to wear it, though. It's because he worked at Best Buy. They provide them the polo shirt on day Someday, one. Someday, I believe that he'll get better. And I'll get to see him put this on and head out to work. So you think that if we nab the person behind all this, we may figure out how to conquer the addiction? Right. You really think it'll be that easy? I don't know. But I can't just sit around and do nothing. He's the only family I have in the entire world. What about your parents? When I was only 13, Katrina took them, leaving my seven-year-old brother and I behind. I'm sorry. It's fine. I've already dealt with my past. Now I'm just working as hard as I can to complete the duty I've been given. Yeah. Hey, Agent Jones. Oh no. I just want to double check one thing. You didn't find anything in the bathroom. Nope. Nothing in there. It must be the bedroom then. Just like I thought. Are you serious about this? Huh? Now you're having second thoughts? Well, not exactly. Uh, then what? I understand how you feel, but he's got an incurable disease. And he used to be one of us. So? The truth he's given us so far could all be completely fabricated. He's a genius lone wolf agent who solved nothing but difficult cases during his years of active duty. That's what they told me at Quantico, at least. Over and over again. I had to listen to them talk about how no one could ever replicate the kind of work he did. But let's be real here. You saw his face, didn't you? It was inhuman. It looked like the face of a killer who's been possessed by death. He's sick! Patricia Clarkson is here, in the next room, only a single wall away from us. After 14 years, he went back to Lucare, kidnapped her, and imprisoned her here. He's trying to complete something big right now. Something that's deeply connected to Saint Rouge. Gulp. You sure about that, Scoob? <sighs> All right, that's sick. Also pretty cool. What is all this? That is a prosthetic anus. Damn, bitch, you live like this? I mean, is there a telephone in here? I can only move forward. I just need to save. Of people from Lucare. <laughs> the photo he's got of Mrs. Carpenter. And this wall is dedicated to Greenvale. All the deceased have been crossed out. I'm 
Sheriff Melvin Woods. Uh oh. Donkey donk. <laughs> Yeah, hey, spoilers! Oh Lisa Clarkson? What is this, dude? Where's Patricia? <laughs> I actually got a little scared. That's our altar. What are you doing? <laughs> Thanks for the help, Simon. Really appreciate it. Simon's in the other room like, yeah, get her. I told you, you should have smiled more. We're going to have another cutscene, aren't we? This is a cutscene load, without a doubt. So the graphics for the cutscenes are like worse than the intro cutscene to Civilization 2. York Agent York York Agent York 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 Agent, Agent York. York Hey Agent York York Agent York? Agent York? York? Hey! <laughs> hey, Agent York. What? Uh, you're Lise Clarkson. What's wrong? You're acting weird. Sorry, Hattie, I'm fine. Angry Arthur. More importantly, do these red seeds come from some kind of plant that grows around this area? I don't know. What do I look like, a botanist? It's actually exactly what I was going to say. This isn't your average backwoods town. The Clarkson's ego and control has been piercing the town's heart like a massive dinosaur bone. But over this past <laughs> century... Time has been busy eroding the beast. Uh, he's got the away with words. Now, the very thing that once fortified this town is polluting it with putrid gas and rotten marrow. Zach, this is the point where it all collapses. Please. If you'll excuse me. I need to travel back to the town to save the game. Skirt. No escape? Watch me. Just don't crash, I beg you. We've been in this town for longer than we originally planned. New ever. dialogue! No, I'm not complaining. I'm used to living out of a hotel, and I love southern food. There are some inconveniences, though. There's no movie theater in this town, nor is there a video rental Just store. wait till 2020, the TV buddy. the hotel room doesn't get any of the on-demand movie channels. We'll just have to get lucky and encounter a movie being shown on TV. The movie environment in Lucare is no different from that of the 70s, Zach. No, they don't have a movie theater. So I suppose it's even farther back than that. 
But it's true that these are the times in which one always encounters the best movies. It's always been that way, hasn't it? Think back with me. Remember that hotel in the rundown town near Monroeville, just outside of Pittsburgh? I took a shower, and by the time I got back into bed, it had already started. Time Walker. 1982, I'm unfamiliar with directed this by Tom Kennedy. I started watching it without any idea as to what it was about, but it instantly got me hooked. The plot highly exceeded all my expectations. Constantly revealing shocking truth after shocking truth, it was a hyper-realism masterpiece. Even after we checked out from the hotel, we couldn't get that film out of our heads. Not even when we stopped by the Monroeville Mall, the primary filming location for Dawn of the uh. Dead. Instead of the living dead, both you and I were totally preoccupied with thoughts of that living mummy. And we were so excited Treasure. to visit the Monroeville Mall, too. You kept insisting that you were going to track down those kumquats that Roger had eaten. <laughs> Excuse fact, me? I'm pretty sure the only reason I took on that case was because I knew it would let us travel out there. Instead, Time Walker blindsided us. And that's all we could think about. Even when we were inside the mall, we were both off in a different world. There you have it, Zach. A beautiful memory of an encounter with an 80s masterpiece in a very unexpected place. What a story, Zach. Skirt. All right. Save at the payphone. And I mean, it was a banner week. We, we learned a lot. Oh, there's a payphone outside. I try to hide my suddenness. I gotta go check out this wasp's nest, dude. What are you supposed to do if you have a a, a wasp's nest embedded in your concrete? But also you live in an area with population density, so if you just smash it, it'll probably end up stinging people on the sidewalk. Spray it after... Spray it with what? Fill it with foam? Like shaving cream? Call a local beekeeper? I live in a city of like three and a half million people. In the concrete jungle. Where do you find <laughs> a local beacon? You, you open, open the yellow pages? There's definitely a beekeeper. I gotta tell you though, we got another problem. It's, um... Let's do one more. Just in case. It's a long weekend. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. And it's a Sunday. Um, but we'll figure it out, I guess, for now. Let me make sure Kate's good to go.